All right, welcome to uh, Football Sunday. Well, Super Bowl Football Sunday, whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, yeah, I put a put a fucking poll out for what football movie should I review, and I put like four of them up, like I usually do. Uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, I think one of them was the replacements with Gene Hackman and Keanu Reeves. Then another one was the remake of The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. And there's also another one, Rudy, with uh, Sean Astin from the 90s. And this one, Remember the Titans with Denzel Washington. Which I'm not surprised that everyone's going to pick this one because, you know, I review Training Day, so why not do another Denzel Washington movie? I'm a big fan of this guy, so I, I don't know if I'll do another Denzel Washington review. And this time, this is like a football movie instead of uh, him acting like a crazy narc detective doing crazy shit. Crazy fucked up shit. So, uh, yeah, let's get into this movie. So, I just finished watching this movie, and it's pretty good. And I thought, I thought it was an amazing movie. Telling the story of, yeah, you know how it goes. I heard the story many and many and many of times. If that makes any sense, I said many. I said many and many of times. Yeah, I heard the story so many times. What I'm talking about is this whole segregation and the whole the race thing, blacks and whites and Martin Luther King. We we we've been through all that shit. We we heard that story so many times as children. Now we still hear it to this day as adults. But things are a lot different now. You know, there is still a lot of racist people out there still. But time has times has changed now since back in those sixties and seventies days, or even earlier than the sixties. Times have changed now. There's a different time now. It's not the same like it used to be. More and more people get along with each other. Blacks and whites get along with each other a lot better now than back then. Thank God, you know, it's just... It's not needed. It does not matter what, what skin color you are. It's about who you are inside of you. It's not about if you're black, white, green, purple. It doesn't matter. People back then didn't understand that. That's how fucking retarded they were. It's all about, oh, 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 blacks and whites and blue, 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 blue. It does not matter. It doesn't matter what the skin of color it is. It's about who you are as a person. It's about who's inside of you. It's not in the outside of it, the color. It's about the inside. So that's basically what the movie's really about. It's about getting along with each other and understanding who you are as a person instead of the color of your skin. So the movie starts off where, um, this uh, this coach, this white coach, and well, oh, no, you know, at the beginning of it, they had they were at this funeral. Des watches at the funeral with these all these other football players or something like that. They're at the funeral, this and that. We'll, we'll get to that soon, but right now we're talking about now the present day of this movie, where the uh, the regular uh, I think the white coach he was coaching uh, the white team, and it turns out uh, Des Washington is gonna be taking over with his uh black players and stuff like that. They're all going to be all together, work together, this and that. And they got to figure out how to get along with each other, the blacks and the whites. They got to figure out how to get along with each other, this and that. That's how the whole story goes. They try to figure out how to get along with each other. And Desa watched it and says, like, it doesn't matter what color you are, this and that, you know. So we have, like, a, I think a big cast in this movie. So there's, like I said, there's Desa Washington, ugh, Ryan Gosling, I'm not a fan of that guy. I said it many times. He's a big dork. Wood Harris, Eden Supley, remember him from uh, Mall Rats and fucking a uh, whole bunch of other uh, Kevin Smith movies. You guys used to remember who he is. Hayden Parenteer plays the little girl, which she reminds me of somebody else from another TV show. We'll get to that soon. Donald Faison's in here. You remember him from Scrubs. He played Turk in Scrubs. He's one of the football players. Kate Bosworth plays the. Uh, the white kid's uh, girlfriend who's like against him hang out with black people or something like that for a while. Then she changes her mind when he's in the fucking hospital. Fucking cunt. Then we got, we got a whole bunch of other people in there too besides that. Um, I don't know everybody in this movie, but I'm trying to find the actors. Is, they, they have to mix of this on Google. They have to mix of actors and the people that else in real life they're all based off of. So... Oh, uh, yeah, I really like it. I really like the characters' movie. It's just like the way it works, the way they they act and stuff like that. It makes it feel the way it's supposed to be in a movie. 
movies today with these actors, they can't act for shit. They're just not good actors. Like the guys they have here in this cast. And like I said, it starts off where, yeah, like I said, so they, they got to find to get along with each other, this and that, and the uh, the coach, I think the the white coach, he gets replaced with, uh, what was his white coach name? I think it was Will Patton, I think. Will Patton, uh, he plays the coach, Bill Yost. He gets replaced with uh, Coach Herman. Herman. Uh, hang on. It's Herman something. Herman Herman Boone. Replaced with Herman Boone. Played by Denzel Washington. He replaces him. And his daughter is like upset about that. Okay. You know what? Let, let, let's, let's get into her daughter real quick. Hayden Parenteer. Let, let's get into that little girl right real quick. So, the reason why I said what I said about that little girl is that she reminds me of a character from the Boondocks who acts exactly just like her. If you know who I'm talking about, you will know who the fuck I'm talking about. Remember that little girl from the Boondocks, a uh, little white girl, she always acted all, you know, hyped up and talking just like this character. She's playing basketball. You remember in the fucking cartoon show, she's playing basketball there too and she's talking a lot of shit. The, the, the creator just took the idea from the, from this movie and put it in that cartoon, in the Boondocks. I can't remember what that little girl's name was in the Boondocks. She acts exactly the same as Hayden Panter's character in this movie. I'm like, he got the kind of idea from this fucking movie. I'm like, every time I see this little girl, I keep thinking that girl from the Boondocks. I'm like, this is the girl from the Boondocks. This is a live action version of her. Played by Hayden Payne and Parenteer. I was like, laughed my ass off about it. I was like, that's where you got the idea from. I was like, this is, this character sounds very awfully familiar. But uh, yeah, fucking, it's funny as shit. But then you got uh, Wood Harrison here. I think he plays like, uh, Desa Washington's assistant coach in the movie, I think. Wood Harrison's always good, like he always is. Yeah, there's like a lot of funny things in here with the uh, the players, you know, you're trying to get along with each other. Like this one scene where uh, one of the uh, the black players put one of the uh, poster on the wall, and the white dude got mad about it. He's like, "Oh, well, take that off! I want to keep looking at that." Well, is there, so there's a white wall you can look at. You don't have to look at that. And they started beating the shit out of each other. Uh, uh, started fucking hitting each other and shit. They had to break it up and everything. Des Washington had to talk to him about, look, I don't care what color you are, you can't be doing stuff like that, this and that. Like, I love the way how Des Washington works. And any movie he's in, he always makes it magical. Everything he's in, the way he he says shit is funny as hell, and the way he expresses himself makes it work for the movie. And the two captains have to like, you know, get along with each other. The white dude and the black dude, they have to get along with each other, this and that. And at the end, they kid him like best friends. But even though one of the white dudes gets in like a, an a, a car accident from a drunk driver that's in a 16-wheeler truck or something like that. And he like he dies like 10 years later. And like the end of the movie, there's like this funeral for him or some shit like that. Pretty sad about that, you know. Fuck these drunk driver motherfuckers. Now, I thought he got took it out because the whole football controversial thing with the, uh, the whole blacks and whites in the same football team or something like that. That's something to do with that. But no, it's just a regular drunk ass driver and drunk off his ass hit him. That's what really what fucking happened. And there's scenes where uh, Ian Supley his character, he, he's, he's like fat as fuck in this movie. But now in real life, he, even Supley lost a lot of weight. Now he's like, he's pretty fucking jacked now. He's like pretty muscular now. I'm like, wait, who from a big fat guy to like a really fucking muscular guy? He's, he's like big as the Hulk now as a muscled guy. But, yeah, he, he sits at the uh, the black table. They're like, hey, man, what you doing over here? Should you be with your people? He's like, nah, I, I don't care what color you guys are. You know, I'll hang out with anybody. You know, I don't care what color anyone is. And he starts, like, singing, like, the black song or something like that. I was like, it's funny as hell. I really like this character here. They got that fucking hippie-looking dude. He just shows up. They, had, they hired him from, I think, from their school or something like that. And one of them calls him a fruitcake or something. That he he ends up like kissing one of the uh, the captains just to fuck with him or something like that, and they got he got pissed off trying to fight him or something. It's pretty fucking funny. Pretty funny scene that one is too. There's other part the uh, like in the fucking like early in the fucking morning they decide to go for a jog through the forest, and like one of the coaches is like. Well, one of the assistant coaches like was telling Nessa Washington, "Hey man, why are we doing this? We're, we're Marines." 
Desert Washington ignores him. He's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Let's go through the fucking forest and run through it and shit. Jog. That's, that's the point, you idiot. Desert Washington is trying to train these guys like Marines. That's how he supposed to do. It was this idiot. He's like, well, we, well, you can't train them like the Marines. That's the point, you dumbass. God damn, these people are stupid. That's the point, to make them tough. That's what you gotta do to make these players better. You gotta make them tough. Oh yeah, I made a mistake. Uh, Wood Harris, uh, he's not one of the fucking coaches. He's like, he's one of the players. That's uh, best friend of one of the, the white dudes. I made a mistake on that one. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that for. Oh, shit. Anyways, yeah. And they, they, they made it all the way to this, uh, to the graveyard. So he's like, you see this graveyard here? This is the graveyard of the Gettysburg fight thing. The whole thing happens when, you know, when people don't get along with each other. And you, we don't want to end up like them. We got to play hard and work together to win. That's what he said. You know, really, really good scene. Really great memorable scene right there. That, that really tells everybody to, you know, you have to get along to get through anything. You know, that's better. Race, you know, different opinions. It doesn't matter. You guys gotta get along with each other to win shit. You know, that's what you gotta do. Then there's scenes where uh, one of these racist dudes fucking throws a brick through a fucking uh, dude doesn't wash this fucking house. While you know, his daughter and the other coach's daughter hanging out with each other in the house. They fucking they threw a brick through his house and. These racist assholes threw it through it, and he'd, they'd drive off and say, Hey, Coach Coon! <laughs> and they went to the news about it, and that's why was talking shit. He's like, I, w I want to know where these guys are at. I want them here, and I want to come to my I'm right at my house. I don't care where you guys at. Come to my house. I'll show you something. And then and then the assistant coach dude was like, Why you gotta, why you gotta be, all, be all like that for? Desert Watch is like, I'm trying to be intimidating. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what you gotta do. Fucking like this guy is like a fucking like a, a pussy. This uh this uh white assistant coach, he's like a pussy. He's like he's just like whiny, he's like, oh, why you gotta do this? Why you make him train like Marines and come on, dude. He's trying to make him tough. Hey, he, he got backed out with some fucking racist ass people. Like come on with that. <laughs> oh man, this like this guy's a fucking wimp. It's uh fucking Bill Bill Yost, this dude's like a fucking wimp. Anyways, what else happened in this fucking movie? Oh yeah, like Donald Faison's character is pretty goofy too. He's a pretty goofy boy. He says a lot of goofy shit. Fucking uh, he keeps like smiling this shit. Oh, I want to play football for fun. <laughs> He's like, like there's watching. Oh, football's for fun, huh? Football's for fun. No, football ain't for fun. Like that part was funny too. This dude couldn't like stop smiling and shit. Like a goofy ass smile. <laughs> Oh man, that's why that's why you end up on Scrubs because he's funny. That's why you end up on Scrubs. He worked. Look at uh, Turkey JD. What else? Uh, what else? Fuck happened in this movie? There's a lot of things happening in this movie. There's a lot of shit happens. Like I said, uh, fucking the dude's girlfriend. Uh, what is her? Uh, Kate Bosworth. She was like fucking racist. And she goes, she don't want to be around him and the black guys because oh, I, I want to hang out with those type of people. Then at the end of the movie, she just changed her mind and she's just. Feels bad he's in a hospital and shit. Like, fuck you, bitch. F like, fuck you. Like, really? All of a sudden, now you care about him because he's in a hospital? He's about to die? Like, get the fuck out of here with that. Her, her care is an asshole. You, you know, also, I'm not, I'm not going to be that big on Kate Bosworth as an actress, really. I, I don't see what's, what's so great about Kate Bosworth as an actress. She's pretty fucking bland, man. I don't get what's so special about her. She's married to that nerd Justin Long... Wow, that wants to ruin your life is being with that fucking geek. Justin Log. Ugh, that guy's boring. Justin Log. I'll tell you that what's not long is Wiener. That's what's not long. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a good one, right? No, not really. That was pretty fucking terrible. Then once again, we got our racist coach again. <clears throat> He's on TV talking shit about Desert Watch, this character, call him a monkey. And then they had this whole game, and the referees being a racist asshole too. And the white coach, uh, Bill Yost, he was like, "Well, why are you doing this for?" And like the the referees being an asshole, and 
so the day they finally decided to do something about it, and like Bill Yost was like, you know what, fuck it, just throw the black players in there, throw that character player in there, throw that. Who gives a shit? So they did that, and they won the game against them. And fuck it, uh, Des Washington's patting all the other players on the other team on the back. He's like, hey, good job, good job. Tried to shake the uh, coach's hand. The coach hit, didn't want to shake his hand because he's racist. And this part happens where Des Washington's like, hey, coach. He tosses him a banana because he called Des Washington's character a monkey. So, ha, 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 right? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, though. He's fucking just tossing him a banana. It's like, hey, coach, here, here's a banana because I'm a monkey. Get it? <laughs> Funny ass shit. Funny ass shit. Yeah, like I like I said, I can't stand racist people. Like I can't stand it. Either side, like e- even if a black person is racist to a white person, I, f- I have a, I have a problem with that also. It's like either side, I have a problem with it. It's like it's, it's fucked up. Like well, why why you gotta be like that for? Just who cares what color they are? Who cares that they're fucking purple? Just it doesn't matter. Just respect the person. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that happened. And like I said, the uh, one of the players get in a fucking accident. If, if the, one of the drunk drivers fucking killed that motherfucker. Well, not killed him. He he was in a hospital. He was like paralyzed to the, to the legs down. And he couldn't really move. And he died like ten years later because of that whole accident. How what happened to him and shit. It's pretty fucking sad. But like I said about Kate Bosworth's character. Like I said, she didn't give a fuck about him until like the he's in the hospital. She's like a, her character's like a real fucking cunt. Yeah, this movie was really good though. I really like this movie. Uh, this, uh, this movie's a classic to me. I really like this. Since he's fucking dorky ass Ryan Gosling. Oh god, I can't believe this guy became a star at, at, later on in his career. Like I don't get what's so great about Ryan Gosling. He's a big dork. I don't feel like this guy so much. It's like Michael B. Jordan. What's so great about him either? They're both overrated actors. They're not. They're not action stars. They're shitty action stars. Uh, I don't get it. I don't, I don't see what's so great about these guys. It's just the people just love these motherfuckers. I don't see it. I was like, every time he's on the screen, he's like, oh god, get off the screen, you big dork. No one cares about what you got to say. He's like, hey, blah, blah, blah. He, and then this one scene, he's like dancing to this cringy, terrible music, trying to tell this black guy what the music's all about. And the black guy's like, cringes his eyeballs out. He's like, this music's terrible, man. You're killing me here. Turn that shit off, man. I don't blame you. I, I'd be in that same position as him because that music was terrible and Greg Gosling's a shitty actor. Fucking dance like a goof. Oh, look at me dancing. <laughs> Keep being Ken to all you motherfucker. How about that? So this movie is directed by a guy named <clears throat> I think it's Bose Yakin. <clears throat> the fuck kind of name is that? Bose Yakin. So this guy directed a movie called The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. I have this movie, and I think it's alright, but I think the 2004 one's a lot better, and the guy's more uh, comic book accurate than Dolph Lundgren. Don't get me wrong, Dolph Lundgren's a great actor, but I think the other guy's a lot better. That's just that's just my opinion, my personal opinion. This guy did a lot of movies, though, you know, he has a weird fucking name. He did a movie Safe with, uh, I think, Jason Statham, I think, right? Yeah, Jason Statham. Prince of Persia, the fucking Dirty Dancing, Uptown Girls, uh, movie Fresh with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, he did a movie with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I'm not. And the movie The Rookie with Clint Eastwood and Charlie Sheen. And I seen that movie also. I seen The Punisher and The Rookie. I never seen Safe though. I never seen Safe. He also did that stupid, uh, well, he just wrote this one, Now You See Me. He wrote that stupid, uh, magician movie where these guys robbing shit. He's like magicians. I never see, I never watch those fucking goofy ass movies. The fuck I watch a movie about fucking magicians doing goofy shit. The hell do they look like? A nerd? <clears throat> yeah, this guy did a lot of, not a lot, but he, here is some memorable movies that I know that he did. The Punisher. Well, this most of the time he just wrote it. He, the Punisher and the Rookie, he wrote. But movies like Fresh and Remember the Titans, he directed. Fresh, he wrote and directed. Safe, he wrote and directed. This guy's not bad. He he has a not bad resume here. 
you know, a lot of these I don't know or or I don't care about, like uptown girls. The fuck, I care about uptown girls. I think I care about that shit. Dakota Fanning's in here. There's a Washington one for her before in Man on Fire. And Equalizer 3 that came out last year. That was a good movie, too. Man of Fire, the last the, the ending of Man of Fire was terrible. I didn't like the ending of that movie. The ending was terrible. They could have done a lot better with that. Fucking kill off Denzel Washington. That was stupid. He should have. You know what been better? If he took all those guys to hell with him in that car. They all burned together. That would have been awesome. Okay, so that's his name who uh, played uh, Jerry Bertier. Ryan Hurst. I heard that guy's name before. He was in, uh, say he's in Sons of Anarchy. I never watched that show. My family watched that show, though. I never watched that fucking show. And look at this, look at this. He betrayed a Norse god, Norse god Thor in the video game God of War Ragnarok. Who gives a fuck about that game? Man, I can't believe the girl from the Boondocks in this movie. Uh, I found out her name and the character in the Boondocks is Cindy. I can't believe Cindy was in this movie, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's where the creator got the fucking character from, man. He got from this fucking movie. Aaron Magruder got from here. I was like, is that that girl from the Boondocks? I like laughing my ass off. I was like, that, that is, that is her. That's where he fucking got the idea from, man. Uh, that, was, that shit was funny as fuck. Fucking uh, crazy bitch Cindy. Oh, man. Let, let's get into this fucking these reviews here. Let's see who hates this movie. You got people that hate this movie. This, this guy has me. <clears throat> let's check the uh, check the one star ratings. Let's see here what we got here. Let's see the funny shit. Remember the Titans? Awful. Are you kidding me? How old are you? A lie that perverts the history it allegedly portrays the famous people. What the hell? Wait, what did he say? A lie that perverts the history and allegedly portrays the famous people. Uh, I think you should watch the whole movie, buddy. I I, I think you didn't watch the whole thing. I'm mad. I'm as mad as I've ever been. What the fuck? What? I'd rather gag myself with a spoon. Alright, go ahead. Do it. Fucking do it, then. Boring as hell. So you're telling me hell's not boring? Hell is not boring at all. You should go down there right now. You'll see how it was not boring. It's pretty fun down there. It's nice fire up your ass and everything. It feels really good. You should try it yourself, buddy. Boring as hell. Awful. What the fuck? Did I watch the same movie as these people did? What the fuck are they talking about? Let's try the two stars real quick. Let's see. Well, what we got here? Uh, soft, phony, and a hard watch. What's phony about it? Forget the trite bore fest. Oh, like you're not boring at parties, motherfucker. Forget the Titans. How about forget you, fucking asshole? How about that? You know, I don't know. These people might be might be racist or something. We all know like black people in a fucking football team or something. Sentimental and predictable. It's not predictable. What the fuck are you talking about? This movie isn't very good. Oh my god. Pretty corny movie. What's corny about it? Totally predictable cliche. Oh my god. Mediocre, predictable, brass, unrealistic, and downright overrated. Forget the Titans. And once again, another person. It could be not worse, but not the worst. What the fuck are these? What kind of drugs are these people on? Alright, that's it. I'm done reading this shit. These people are on... Might, 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 might be racist or something else. I don't know what's going on. What well, something's going on with their heads? That's fucked up. So I was looking at the uh, the trivia here, <clears throat> and there's there's one scene they change in the movie. There is one scene in the film where a brick is thrown through Coach Boone's window in real life. It was an old toilet that was thrown, but filmmakers thought that would add humor to the serious situation. Would it really? Because I don't know. Because Throwing an old toilet in somebody's house is still, you know, pretty fucked up, to be honest with you. And changing the story is just makes it unrealistic, to be honest. I, I thought they should let that in in the movie. They throw an old toilet through his fucking window. What, you people really think they will laugh at that? I mean, I, will, I actually would still laugh at that. I mean, it is so. that's not kind of funny if you think about uh, throwing an old toilet through somebody's window. I mean... They should have kept it in there because it's realistic, and that, it what happened in real life. It should stay in the movie. They see you don't do that. You don't change. You don't change history. 
Just like with uh, those Call of Duty games where uh, the World War Two. Also, they had like females in there and shit. I'm like, there was no females in World War Two. Well, I mean, there there was no females in the army in World War Two. That that never happened. There was there was nurses, but they weren't in the army in World War Two. They wasn't in the army until the seventies or the eighties. So that's like way later on in the future. So I don't know what the fuck Call of Duty is doing, but they must be on fucking store too much cocaine or something because that's inaccurate in history. It's like it's like the whole the director changes it from a toilet to a brick for this movie. I feel like they should let it keep the toilet in there. They should have kept the old toilet in there and threw it through the fucking Coach Bruins fucking uh, window. They should have kept that in the movie. They should have never removed that part. That's stupid doing that. They should have kept it in there. It doesn't matter if you're going to laugh at it or not. They're still going to take it seriously. What do you think's going to happen? Fucking, uh, there's so shit and piss in that oil toilet? I was surprised it was. What else do they have here? Uh, I, think that, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Nothing else really that interesting around here. Oh, yeah, and uh, by the way, uh, happy uh, Super Bowl 58 or something. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the Chiefs lose because I don't want to see uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift celebrate. Ugh, fucking bitch.